Hey everyone, I'm Bob. I'm with Bob CNC and I'm here with my best friend Keith and uh, we are doing a video series on writing G-code by hand or at least being able to look at G-code and diagnose what's going on. So we've worked on the number line. We've done some G0 rapid movements and, and the linear movements in G1 that have a feed rate. But today we're going to tackle one that's pretty difficult to understand conceptually. But once you get it, it's pretty easy. And we're going to try to figure out how to get you from there to there. And if you're a math person, this will be easy. If you're not, if you're into marketing kind of stuff, it's a little bit harder. But uh, Keith has got a project that we're working out on the shop and he wanted to do it right in G-code. He could do this in his sleep if he just like did some pictures. But he said, Bob, I want to learn G-code. So, wow, we're going to learn some art so he can pull this off. And, you know, one day we're going to send you a video of uh, that actual piece. But for today, we're going to work on just arts. We're not going to really work on writing the G-code file. We're just going to work on what is the G-code file for arts. And there are actually two G-codes for arts. So the first one is G2. The second one is G3. Exactly the same commands except for one goes clockwise and one goes counterclockwise. So G2 is clockwise. G3 counterclockwise. And like the other movement G-code commands, we have to tell it where it's going. So if we, this is our start point, and we had a G2 command, this would be our end point. The end command is the X, Y point of where it ends. Okay, not to be confused where it starts because that's actually gonna be covered in the G-code before that. So G2, where it ends. Now, in your G0 or G1, that's all you need. You need where you end it in your X, Y, right? Because it's a straight line. However, because we have an arc, we need one more thing, and that is the center point. The center point defines where that arc center point is, right? It's pretty easy. Now, we're going to do that in vector components IJ. Now, if you're a vector kind of guy, this makes sense to you. If not, it really is pretty simple. We have X, Y coordinate system, and the components of that are going to be I for moving in the X direction and J for moving in the Y direction. So it really is, think of it like this. The distance to the center in the x direction is going to be i, and the distance to the center in the y direction is going to be j. Now, I don't want to try to make this more complicated, but it just is. Now, remember, we are in absolute values in our xy coordinate system. So, here's our origin. It's absolute. Our center point, however, is going to be defined incrementally. So it's going to be defined from the start point to the center. And yes, signs matter. So if your x direction, which is going to be an i component, is going in the positive direction, it's positive, like it is in this example. However, what, what makes it the positive direction, Bob? The positive direction is going positive on the number line. The negative direction is going here. So if you're taking that distance and you're defining from the start point, and you're going to the center, and you're going this way, it's x positive. If you were going, this was the start point, and you were going that way, then x would be going this way, back to the left, which is okay. negative. Positive is up, negative is down in the j. So Keith and I have worked on this for a bit, and uh, we've got an example or two that we want to show you, just so that maybe it makes more sense. So I am going to turn it over to Keith, and we're just going to walk through those. What we're going to do here is, is show you not so much just how to write the G-code, but what the G-code means when you want to cut an arc. In this particular example, we're assuming that you're already, uh, your, your spindle or bit is already in the workpiece. We are not going to deal with speeds and feeds right here, so that's being left out of this uh, G-code uh, illustration. But your first line of code is going to be G1 indicating that there's linear motion and we're simply telling the machine where is this movement going to start from? Well, it starts from X2, Y5. That's what those coordinates are. Over 2 and up. Okay. And then G2 is another motion command, but rather than dealing with a straight line, now we've told the machine we want to make an arc. Because we picked uh, the two command versus three, we're telling the machine we want the spindle to travel 
in a clockwise uh, uh, direction. Yeah. yeah, direction rotation. So we're going to start here where the S for start, and then we're going to travel over here to the N for or the E for N. Now again, with all G code commands, we're not telling the machine where we are. We've already done that. We're telling the machine where we're going to end up, which is X10 on the X axis, Y5 on the Y axis. And now we have to include the I and J location. And that is going to be, again now, I'm going from my starting point, which is over here, on the X axis, one, two, three, four points. So that I4. And notice now, on the Y uh, axis, that I'm not moving up or down from the starting point. And because I'm on the same axis as when I began, my J is a zero. All right, so now if I tell the uh, machine to execute that command, my spindle is going to start cutting here and move, oh, yeah, start here and move over here. So now we're going to go counterclockwise, so we're going to use the G3. And once again now, guys, all we're doing is counting little blocks on a grid system. If you're going to write G code, you're going to want to draw out your workpiece and put it on a grid system. And in this particular case, of course, we're representing inches. But here, with the G3, where's my uh, end point? My end point is on the x-axis two over, on the y-axis, I'm five up. And now I have to de define where my center point is. Again, it's measured from my start point. So from on the uh, x-axis, I'm one, two, three points over. That's why I'm I4. And once again, notice on the y-axis going up and down, I'm not moving at all. I'm on the same plane, so I'm at J0. That is fantastic. Now, those two are pretty good uh, examples of where one of the I's or the J's are zero. It could very well be that you don't have any zero, and I'll just do an example real quick of that, if that's okay. So what we'll do is we're just going to take this point right here, and we're going to continue the arc around to the other side, which we're going to say is... One, two, three, one, two, three, right by here, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and make this the start point, and let's make this the end point. So we're going to basically do the same thing that Keith has done. The first thing that I would do is write the G1, because that's going to be the line before it and give you the start. So that would be, oops, I need to put that back up here where I said I was going to, okay? So that would be X3. And Y, 8. Okay? Now, since I'm going clockwise, I need to write the G2. And then I'm going to end here because we're going to our ending point. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. <coughs> X9. And then Y is up 3. Now i got to do my dreaded I's and J's. So since I'm at my start point, I go over till I get to this line that the center point is on. One, two, three. So I'm over three. And then I'm down one, two, three to get to this line, right? But notice I'm down, so it's a negative. So again, you can see it doesn't really matter where your center point is. The I and J are always increment, and the sign does matter. So here's what you can do, and here's what we would recommend that you do. Get you a program like NC Viewer, NC Corrector, or any kind of uh, program that will plot your tool path and just give it a shot. If it doesn't look like a circle, you probably got something wrong here. And this is one of those commands where it absolutely has to be right. If it cannot figure out where that center point is, it's going to give you an error and then nothing's going to work. So I hope this has been informative, and I hope we'll be able to move on to the next step where Keith is going to actually do a project for our shop using what he's learned here. Guys, Thanks, guys. You, oh, sorry. Sorry. If you have any questions, guys, just remember you can contact us at the help desk at bobcnc.com. Till next time, thanks so much. Thanks for watching.